On Monday, September 18th, 2017, Hurricane Maria made landfall in the Commonwealth of Dominica, becoming the first Category 5 hurricane on record to strike the island. It's, it's, it's unimaginable. The eyes can't. It just can't explain. It's just violence, you know, and the people are desperate. They're, they're fighting and stabbing each other for over money, loot, and I need your help, man. Come see for yourself. <laughs> Make a donation, you know what I'm saying? Do something. <laughs> but you can see the law is still is in control. There's order, you know what I'm saying? So, at least we got something in our heart. Anyway, I love you guys, you know. And say a prayer for Dominica, man. You know, you know we'll come back. I love you. So, the best of my knowledge, uh, Barbados First Card was the first that I have seen. Probably the first on on uh, to visit Dominica to relieve us from this major catastrophe. So, I salute you, and I am very, very happy as a Dominican, as any Dominican at home and abroad, for the quick response of the Barbados government and the Barbados military. As you know, we've suffered a devastating blow and we're in the process of recovery. I'm a surgeon in private practice in uh, living in Point Michel, the southern part of Dominica. We will have been completely cut off uh, without food, without water. And I just brought in a gentleman with a fractured leg. I've been with him. Uh, fractured femur in several places. I've been with him for the past couple of days since the hurricane. He was washed away in the ravine and uh, several members of his family are still missing. As many as eight of them are still missing. Thank you for being alive, Lord. Because uh, this storm truck stuck at night and uh, I mean, the, I couldn't afford to get scared. I had to hold on to the door. I lost the window and the pressure started coming in. Then I lost part of the roof. And it's only a miracle that I'm alive standing here today to give you the experience. But I mean, uh, everywhere was flooded. Upstairs was flooded, downstairs flooded, and then we lost the roof. So I think, uh, and it was at night, like I said, then our neighbors had to run to us for rescue. It's just a miracle that we're alive. A lot more people are impacted by it. And the worst part is that we got advice that it would have been a Category 3. But by the time it came here, it rapidly intensified to a Category 5. And uh, the damage is immense and it's a total devastation. My house has three bedrooms, two of them are compromised. So my wife, uh, my mother-in-law, uh, two other families from downstairs move up. So it's like uh, some six of us right now sharing one, one room and one bathroom still functioning and the kitchen. Six of us, uh, we had to shack up in that area. So that's where we're taking shelter. But thank God at least we still have a portion of the house that's habitable. We're about to enter the capital, Roseau, to survey the damage left behind by Hurricane Maria.
Well, me and my guys, Harriet, David, I'm Glenn. We came to bring some supply for our people from Antigua. Yeah, because the country, as you can see, the people need help in the country. So you're a Dominican but live in Antigua? Yeah. I live at um, Cooksill in Antigua. I go to Church of God of Prophecy. Yeah. So this is your own personal effort? Yeah. And help out from the, the ministers in Antigua. Yeah. So we, we appreciate it helping the Dominicans because we have to help one another. Yeah, we're running low on fuel because while we was coming down, the boat had so much of load. When we reached the Guadeloupe, the mangrove let go of plenty of um, wood. So we had a rough time coming down. So we had to burn off the whole tank of gas, plus we had two drum. Yeah. But when we reached to Dominica, the, we spoke to the minister about the situation in Portsmouth. But what happened now? He told us we could have get some gas, but the, the Russian, the people are at a tense risk. Yeah. We couldn't get much gas because everybody want gas, everybody want to move wrong and look for their family. So it's a tight situation in Dominica. Yeah. But hopefully we're looking forward to get some gas so we could go back, so we could get some more stuff and bring them back to the people. Because the people really need it. I was gone. I took and hide on the uh, table around two feet. And a cap. I saw the river going in a different direction. I live in Potter Street. No, I live in Silver Street, Pottersville. And the rockers were going down to the bridge. I see we were going to take a next course. I just couldn't understand what happened. It was really, really, really troublesome. Where's your home? My home, my home finish. Poison, see what she put us will. But funny, I have a bar in front of my house. The bar is my building too. Concrete, concrete roof. Nothing to happen to it. Nothing to happen to it. But at the back, I don't know house. I sleep in a car, a car I have, my car was parked about, when I get the car it was about 50 yards from my, from my home. And that's where I sleep in. So you uh, here or you just... I used to work a long, long, long time. But I was going to see bath and I just come and relax there. But otherwise things, things, not, I hate people say, I hate people say things okay. Things are okay man, it's just a kind of a way, but it's not okay.
What are the immediate needs at the shelter? What is your need? How do you feel now about the support you have received so far? I think uh, a lot of us we lost everything because when you when you lose your roof, everything inside goes spoiled. Your your furnitures and everything, food, no fr your fridge, free days, everything you have to throw out everything, and the little support that the dry goods that you can get will go a very long way. And we really um, we cannot be overly thankful to the people of Barbados and um, Barbados Coast Guard for being here with us in Salisbury. We set sail from here on, I think it was Wednesday. I left with 71 extra persons, so in total of my crew we had at least 81 persons on board. That included people, personnel from the media, Sedema relief teams, the Barbados Defense Force security team, and also a team of artisans to help assist with the relief effort in Dominica. Dominica is really in a state of devastation in terms of the whole island. And being there in 2015 and dealing with Erica, what, we, what I saw when we returned gave me the, um, or showed me the extent of the damage that Maria indeed caused. Everywhere you look, their roofs turned off, their people at night trying to use fires to light to keep themselves in terms of getting something to eat. Um, the relief effort is ongoing and it will be ongoing for a long time in my personal opinion based on the things happening on the ground. Once we got there, obviously there was not a system set up as yet, but the system is indeed set up and the supplies are going to be going out. It has to be marshaled to ensure that you get them out to the different communities. We must bear in mind that a lot of the roads are cut off, so now we're using the vessel. My vessel in itself did two um, supply, supply missions along the west coast to get supplies in to some of these affected communities. And we were welcomed, it was not a problem. The, 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 the residents were very receptive, they even assisted getting the supplies off the boat and then distributing them among themselves. And this is something that has to happen until the country can clear the rules and the infrastructure needed to get in and out. It will take some time for Dominica to recover from Hurricane Maria. However, with local, regional and international assistance, the journey will be made easier.